We're still working with, uh, with torque and with the total torque for, and uh, the equilibrium, rotational equilibrium idea. Uh, this is a problem that we're going to work from, uh, from a previous AP Physics B exam. Uh, so we get some experience with that. Uh, so the idea here is that there's nothing holding this plank on, uh, on this cliff, whatever this is, uh, the top of a building, I guess, uh, except gravity. And so there's, there's nothing, you know, it's not bolted into place here. Uh, and so as this person gets farther and farther out, uh, we expect that at some point, you know, the, this whole thing is going to start to tip downward and this person is, well, going to have a really bad day. Uh, the question is, how far out can they go before that happens? Uh, now, I would like to advise you, uh, let's not do this one in the field. Let's just solve this one theoretically. Uh, so in order to solve this problem, let's first uh, draw it out with the forces involved. And uh, we'll get everything labeled and get our relevant measure measurements made and uh, prepare for it that way. So we have this long plank, and it tells us the total length for this thing is 5 meters from end to end. Uh, we can assume that it's, it's uniform, so the, uh, the force of gravity we can treat like it's right at the middle of this plank. So let's go ahead and put that in here. So that'll be our weight of the plank. Uh, we also have somewhere along here, and I'll just put a note here, this is 2.5 meters from the end. Uh, we also have somewhere out here the weight of the person, and we're not sure where that's going to be, so I'm not going to put a measurement in there. Oops, weight of the person. Okay, and then right here at that corner, if we imagine getting to the the last point before this thing starts to tip downward. If it were to tip downward, this plank would only have contact with the building right at that one corner. So as we get closer and closer to that point where it starts to tip, this end will have less and less force, less and less normal force between the building and the plank, and it gets more and more placed at this position right there. So that position, it tells us, is two meters from this end, 2.5 meters from this end is the, the weight vector. So another 0.5 meters over, we're going to have our normal force. So that's 3 meters from this end, or 2 meters from this end. Now, we, uh, we can choose whatever position we want to to, to look at torque from, uh, torque about a sing single position. Uh, but I think since we can see that it's going to rotate around that point, it makes sense to consider this to be our, uh, our zero position. So now we need to draw in our R vectors. We've got one going out this way. That'll be R to the plank, the plank's weight. And then one going out this way, and that'll be R to the person, their weight force. Uh, we don't know what this one is going to be, but we know that this is 0.5 meters. That's labeled right here. Uh, our third force, the normal force, has a distance of zero from this point that we, uh, we say it's rotating about. So we have a torque going in the clock, or sorry, counterclockwise direction um, from this plank's weight, and then a torque going in the clockwise direction from the person's weight. And you know, we want that last point before this torque wins out. Uh, so now we can set up our equation. Whoops, switch colors again here. We're going to say the net torque has to be zero. This is the last moment before we start to rotate, before we start to accelerate in, in this direction. Um, so now we've got a couple of, uh, of terms here. We'll have, uh, let's see, the R for the plank times the weight for the plank. Um, in, let's see, that'll be in the counterclockwise direction. And if you curl your fingers around on the right hand in the counterclockwise direction, your thumb points upward. So we would usually say that's a positive torque. And then for the, the other direction, uh, this weight force is trying to make it rotate 
uh, clockwise. And again, if you curl your fingers of your right hand around clockwise there, your thumb points downward, so we'd usually call that a negative torque, and that'll be R to the person times the weight of the person. And that has to equal zero. So now we can see that the distance um, from the, the point of rotation to where the weight force is, or the, the center of gravity is for this plank, that has to equal the distance to the person times the weight of the person. And now we can solve for, uh, for all that. So we've got the r to the plank is 0.5 meters. The weight of the plank isn't given directly, but we've got 100 kilograms, so that's going to be 9.8 times 100 kilograms, so that'd be 9,800 newtons. Has to equal r to the person times the weight of the person. The person was 50 kilograms, so times 9.8, that'd be uh, 490 newtons. And uh, let's see. 9,800, 490, just double checking my math. Uh, sorry, 4,900. No, 490 was right. Okay, I'm sorry. I'd not sure what I was thinking there. Uh, okay, so anyway, our, uh, our distance to the um, center of gravity is 0.5 meters. The weight of that plank is going to be 100 times 9.8. So, ah, that's where the problem is. Not 9,800. 908. Ah, yes, multiplying by 100. So difficult. 980 newtons. There we go. All right, I knew it didn't look right. Uh, now we've got, uh, uh, let's see, so 0.5 times the 980 That'd be 490 newton meters is equal to the distance to the person times 490 newtons. And if we divide both sides by 490 newtons, we get one meter is the distance to the person. It's the farthest they can walk out on this plank before they start to uh, uh, to cause that to fall is halfway in between here, one meter.